All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Turf Cast match reaction, and we've got the big one here after the derby, obviously. We've got Leeds v Burnley, the two teams that were most highly rated to get promoted from the Championship this season to the Premier League. And I was really concerned because I felt like this was possibly the worst time to face them after an international break. Uh, a squad with a lot of time to really gel in. A cohesion may not be fully there right now. But the same can be also said for Leeds. And the game kind of went how I kind of expected. And it's a massive win. Burnley won, Leeds nil away at Ellen Road. I believe I saw a stat that prior to this game, we've had one win, one draw, and then seven losses in our last couple of games at Ellen Road. Of course, the um, the last win was back in the, I want to say the 13-14 season. I think um, Arfield and Sam Volk scored in that game. And then back in 15-16, that was the 1-1 draw, where Sam Volk also scored the equaliser later on in the game. So... It's been a bit of a patchy record there, however, we have been better in recent years. But a massive win considering the pressure that's been put on us here to really step up after what was a, a somewhat deflating performance in the derby against Blackburn. Now, despite having a lot of possession, a lot of time on the ball, we didn't really create much, especially in that second half. And some may say that even Blackburn probably deserved to maybe even get the winner in that game as the game went out. They probably had the two best chances in that entire second half. So it, this was a massive moment to hopefully bounce back and to really see what we're about character and I saw a, um, a comment on a group chat I'm in labeling that as a prime Sean Dyche performance and I fully agree it was a type of performance where we had to dig in show our character make the most out of our opportunities and also frustrate the opposition and that was done the entire game I mean and leads were completely uh, just wasteful the amount of just stupid offsides that they were caught out for the best case was right at the end I, I think it was just hit the 90th minute for um, eight minutes at a time and it was a throw-in with um, Tanaka and uh, Borgo and it was a throw-in it then passed back immediately to Borgo and he was already offside like it, 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 honestly there's still a lot of time to go in a season however it's fair to say that the quality in this league is definitely worse than Premier League, but I may even say it's probably possibly worse than it was last time it went up because that's ridiculous. And the amount of wasted opportunities as well. I mean, I want to say this so before I do start. Can we stop giving away a stupid chance in the first um, seconds of the game? The same thing happened. Well, not the same thing, but a stupid chance happened against the Blackburn uh, with that halfway, like, halfway line shot that was just over the bar. This time, it was much worse than any decent and a half or put that away uh, every time. With Matteo Jose going through on goal, he had so much time, and thank God he just could not put that one away. The first 10 minutes was pretty obvious what's going to happen. We're at Ellen Road. They're going to come out flying, and we're going to we're going to have to try to get some sort of um, groove into the game here. And that's how it went. And there was chances going both ways in that first half. Leeds, of course, probably was the more dominant of it, but we definitely had some great opportunities. And it was a perfect... Like, if you could ask Scott Parker how that game was going to play out, he probably would have planned it out to go exactly how it did, that we were going to be a bit more cautious, we're going to be, be a bit more pragmatic, step back, and then use our abundance of pace to hit them in the break because Leeds will overcommit a lot because that's how that's how they play with especially the fullbacks for Purple, for example they go so far forward that they're so easy easily caught out and it happened time and time and time again in that first half and that led to well, kind of led to the goal that we had in the end with Kolyosho taking advantage out of a missed depth of slip from Solomon and had everything to do, I think it was like 60, 70 yards out, and just draw over the ball, it was a two-on-one situation, and they did do decently to force Kolyosho to have an easy pass, however, he had to commit, he committed to Kolyosho, unfortunately, it went straight underneath his body to go right into the back of the net, and that is a massive moment, especially after, you know, what happened during the window, the links between Kolyosho potentially going to Wolves, and a few players as well, and that was a massive moment to get that good feel vibe into the club again, and the fact that we came out with the win from that is also a huge moment as well, and I'm really happy for Kolyosho for that, he, he was fantastic, I think every player was really, really good, the only player I would say I, I'm still a little bit cautious about is potentially Lucas Perez, he had a great assist in the first, you know, first 10 minutes out of Luton Town, but there's something about him that I, I'm not fully 
comfortable with and he's got some nice bits of you know nice footwork here or there but I just feel like it could be a little bit overwhelmed to make the right choice at the right time but I guess with time it is a new league he could also get used to it um, debut of course to Zian Fleming um, Lyle Foster not in the lineup or the bench so I'm sure you may hear more about that maybe something's already been said but I didn't keep on top of it so anyway Zian Fleming to start in the lineup his first debut and I Felt like he was fantastic. I want to give a credit to him as well. He worked exceptionally hard. And when he did get even a little bit of scraps up top, he did fantastic to hold up the player and to get cheap fouls, to get cheap free kicks, to buy us some time, you know. And he has some he has some really good strength to him too. And he links up really well. So I really do like the look of Fleming. And I think that he had a great performance. Um, Hannibal, I need to mention Hannibal. I mean, he, he is a he is a right little you know knob, isn't he? Like he just is, but I love him because he's got clearly talent there, and if he can just keep that edge, that personality of almost being like a Luco Nine almost in a way, or someone that just really gets up for acting like the villain of 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 the game and wanted to rattle up the home fans, and in the same way, I could also maybe take off pressure of other players in his in the team because he can take it. I don't know. But I just want to shout out him because he really did uh, rile up the fans. I think he had a little headbutt on Solomon. To be fair, if that was in the Premier League, that would have been probably given us a pen. So thank God for that. But Anthony, I thought was great. Um, and of course, Browner, I thought was great. Lawrence, I thought was great. Um, the Esteve and Worrell, great. Trafford, I want to shout out to Trafford, by the way. Trafford, exceptional. 10 out of 10, man of the match. I mean, passing-wise, could be a bit better, but I don't think we really care. We just have to get the ball out. But Trafford, huge saves. He had the great save against uh, Willy Ganato in the first half. Also, the great dive to his left-hand side from Matteo Joseph in that second half. And in terms of crosses in the box, high claims, he was exceptional as well. Good decision-making. Perfect performance. Clean sheet, and again, similar to Cody Osha, but in a different way. It's just great that to get that clean sheet away from home with a great performance and that he gets that good feeling again with the fan base. Because I feel like, because of what happened last year, maybe there's a bit of um, some rebuilding to create between Trafford and the fan base. Because maybe I don't think he is particularly a great fan of how people have treated him last year. I think I may also be a part of that as well. But he's got this season and he's still really young to really hone in his skills, get that experience at a very physical level and to be a better keeper in the future. And this is a perfect platform to, to, to for him to do so. So it's looking like that could be very well the case. And if that is so, we've got a great keeper for the season. So... Yeah, I mean, I don't think there's much more to really say. Stats-wise, you, you know, I, mean, I think Leeds fans may be here, you know, like 71% uh, percent possession for Leeds. They had a, you know, a, a couple more shots, but not too much more considering the the, poss the possession that they had. Of course, second half, I don't think we had... Did we have a shot in the second? Maybe had one shot in that second half, but it was just a perfect Sean Dyche-esque performance, really. And you can see why Scott Parker got got teams up previously, you know, Bournemouth and Fulham, you can see how he got it done because we saw something similar to this in a different way, of course, to the likes of Cardiff where we weren't really that great against Cardiff but we were really, like, clinical on the transition and to just take advantage and to make our chances count when the opponent makes a mistake and that's what's happened here and on the break, on the transition, we look extremely, extremely, like, just dangerous and that's because we've got pace and we have got a great front line. Jaden Anthony, Cole Yoshaw, Fleming, Lyle Foster, so great. Um, yeah, we've still got some great amount of quality in this team. And it's all about time to make these plays have that you know cohesion, to know each other a bit more. Of course, also, by the way, Bashir Humphreys, I hope forgot about him. Red card in the end, that's fine. He did what he had to do. He's a young lad. He's originally a centre-half, and he played right back today. I thought, it was, I thought it was really good as well. I thought it was really good. Um, people may... I mean, if anyone gives him any any stick, they're an idiot. He, he's not a right back. He can maybe play as a full back, but he's a very defensive man. I want to end defensively. I thought it was great. You know, he's not one to really move the ball up the pitch. So he did his job really well. So yeah, 
Burnley won, Leeds nil. Um, our next game, I want to say, is I think our next one of games is actually relatively like. I mean, you don't, you don't you don't want to say comfortable or whatever, but you know it's ideal. It's ideal after what was, to be fair, a pretty tough start to the season. You know, Luton away is tough, Leeds away is tough, the Derby is tough, Sunderland away is tough. No matter how good or bad they are, and right now they're pretty good. They still got a young team. I do feel like P P Sunderland will uh, fade away in the end. Maybe an injury or two, and may start getting a bit rough around the edges, but I still think they'll be definitely up there for the playoffs. But our next couple of games, we've got Pompey at home, we've got Oxford away, we got Plymouth at home, Preston at home, Sheffield Wednesday away, Hull away. I mean, that's a good couple of games. Pompey, Oxford, Plymouth, Preston. That's a good load of games. So, up, up the climates and all that. Right now, we're currently second. Games will be played, so we may be fourth or third. But a massive win and realistically, Leeds away could actually be possibly the, the toughest fixture in the entire calendar. Maybe, maybe Sheffield United could be up there as well. But the worst is now done. And we've got Luton away and Leeds away done. And we've got six points out of two. So good effort. So Trafford, man of the match. And we'll see you for Pompey. Up the clouds.